is to have real personhood, the only way is to acknowledge God's absolute sovereignty over all choices and borrow from this power. Then it's not real personhood at all. What this does in turn, uh, what this does is turn everything upside down. The advent of the Holy Spirit and his indwelling ministry in our lives is the real source of power, but not in Calvinism. It can't be. It's God who determines everything where we only get to drop to our knees and borrow from his power, the indwelling spirit becomes nearly irrelevant, especially if we see his spirit as a source we cooperate with rather than complete control over choices. Yeah, we can grieve the Holy Spirit. We can submit to the Holy Spirit. We can walk in the spirit. There's an yes. interaction, collaborative, collaborative interaction between us and God's spirit. And in Calvinism, that's just a bunch of nonsense unless you think the compatibilist picture fixes that. Uh, yeah. I don't at all. And I think God wants to indwell us and wants us to enjoy him. And I believe he wants to enjoy us. Yeah. Uh, and, and this idea in Calvinism that God is strictly out for his own glory is another narcissistic comparison. That's all the narcissist is after. That's why the Calvinists create a narcissistic God, because that's one of the ways that they do it. We are so wormy as human beings, and God is so great that he's consistently gaining power through us glorifying him, like he needs it, right? God doesn't need necessarily need to be glorified. He just is because of who he is. It's just going to be an outcome of your relational convictions and, and well, relational... Well, there's a huge theme in the, like in Romans 8, there's a huge theme in the Bible that gets overlooked by Calvinists where we get glorified by God. Yeah, um, yeah. And that gets overlooked completely. Like, why, what's going on there? Yes, yes, absolutely. That's a great point. Great point. The next statement. So the Calvinist model becomes a life of power without. It's an outside-in psychology versus an inside-out model where the indwelling spirit in Christ and our cooperation with his presence and the free decisions we make become the operational model in human life. A biblical model, we... Uh, <clears throat> In a biblical model, we invite the influence of the Holy Spirit, which is always the moment-by-moment -moment choices, free choice, we're asked to make. Our personhood and individual self are in continual need of refining, so our choices become Godward, and we get to enjoy His presence and power. We ourselves have to escape from our own narcissistic tendencies. Here, and this is crucial, we don't borrow from His power, we create a kind of magical harmony, a synchronicity with the spirit from a place of love we walk in the spirit as a source of wisdom and power we're not controlled by the spirit in the sense of being overpowered without real synchronicity in fact the spirit's work in our lives involves an invitation by choice for us to let god have his way then my new identity is based on this synergy yeah i think it's it's much of the same um, but it is an outside-in psychology where <clears throat> it doesn't come from within you. Uh, it comes from God's choices he makes to influence you. Um, sometimes this model and compatibilism is brought up that, you know, if you're free to make the choices that you desire, even though God put them all there, then that's freedom. If somebody mm -hmm. has a gun to your head and you're making choices out of that, right. it's not right. freedom. I would argue that in Calvinism, God has a gun to your head. It might as well. It's really no yeah. different. <laughs> it's the same, it's, yeah. It's, really, it's the same thing. Um, but a, an outside-in psychology permits me to take responsibility for the choices that I make. And I'm not in this, I'm not arguing for determinism versus free will. I don't want to get sucked into that model. The right. model I'm sucked into, the one I'm sucked into, is it seems to be the case that while God makes sovereign choices in the world and even in my life, in the relational aspect that I have with, the intimacy I have with him and, and capable of, he allows me to make my own choices. And if I can make a choice to say yes to the Holy Spirit, I have opened up the door of love into my heart. God just pours in. Um, that choice isn't irrelevant. And he gets permission 
to have a seat at the table in my heart and soul when I say, yes, please invade my life. Please come, influence my choices, walk with me, be with me. Otherwise, it's an outside-in psychology, and nothing like that's going to happen. Isn't that great what I just said? It could happen, <laughs> but it, it's not going to. <laughs> well, it I mean, makes it me great. think of... um. The you know Christ and the you know husband and wife Ephesians five being a picture of Christ and the church how there's a reciprocal relationship there, and I've heard recent I think I heard today somewhere in a meeting that I was at um, that uh, it, the identity is formed in a, in a connect in a connective meeting no it's a it's a book about Adam and Eve that I was reading in your connection your meaningful connection like in your meaningful romantic connection with your partner, your identity is helped formed and shaped. And it's this reciprocal thing where it's not, uh, it's not unhealthy, like you're co you know, dependent on each other, something like that. But it's, it's a voluntary thing. You ended your statement there with the word, this, my new identity is based on this synergy. Of course, that's going to trigger a lot of Calvinists. But um, I would like to point out that in I'm going to put this over here so they can still see your, your head. In First, Second Corinthians 6, 1 Corinthians 6.1, it says, We then, as workers together with him, beseech you that you receive not the grace of God in vain. If you click on that, the Greek word is syner synergeo, synergy. It's where we get the word synergy. Um, it is a, it's a scriptural concept for all the uh, anti-Biblers that might be out there. I, th I thought that was very interesting, the synchronicity that we have with God and the synergy that we have with God and having that identity in a healthy way where there's a co-identity. Anyway, I'm, I'm rambling. Well, and <laughs> within that synchronicity or that synergy, um, God is, is, is involved in our life to the extent that he can, he can create incredible personalities for you and me and anybody that's listening because... He's worked out. You're working out your salvation with fear and trembling. You're mm -hmm. working it out. The gospel, and I think you said this in one of your recent webinars, but the gospel isn't a static propositional truth. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a dynamic force to continue to live out. Yes, yes. Al along the lines of Philippians 2.12, working out your own salvation, because mm -hmm. it doesn't end. It's not, okay, I, I said the, 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 the gospel prayer, um, but but the gospel is nuclear. <laughs> yes. It uh, it shapes our personality, shapes our wisdom because we we participate in it from the moment we say yes to uh, to the gospel, um, and that gets eliminated in Calvinism because in Calvinism you didn't say yes to the gospel. <laughs> you, you you didn't you didn't do that, right? You just didn't. So. I like that, that these features of what it means to be. Um, it wasn't too long ago that I stumbled on open theism, and I thought that was the coolest thing since sausage for a while. <laughs> <laughs> because it had such an interactive aspect to it. And I think some of that interactive aspect is valid in open theism. I believe there are underlying um, propositions and ways of working that out so that that's true are messed up. Uh, so right. I, can't, I can't be an open theist, but I like their idea of this synergetic relationship with God because I think it you, is one. You might and enjoy moment, some uh, some Alfred North Whitehead. Yeah, if you, I was good. If you, you mentioned it before. I keep mentioning if keep you like if read. you like that, but don't want to be an open theist, you might enjoy some Alfred North Whitehead. I'm going to go take a look. So.